that parent is saying about the kid, I also face. Is it really a problem? And what do I do in that place? So then I realized, okay, can I do it in a, any better with my own kids? Will there be any change in my kids if I use whatever counseling I am giving to my clients? And believe me, when I have used those techniques at home, I have changed myself. My kids automatically have become better kids. Teenagers today, we are, we are having three generations in my family. Most of us, I think we have in-laws and all that. But we did not have, suddenly it was a necessity in my family that my in-laws need to come. And the teenagers have adapted with their grandparents. Because of the attitude, we as parents changed towards the kids. Had we not done that, probably they would be very, very aggressive. Why should we adjust? Why should we give our room and all that? So we as parents and as counsellors have to understand that children have a definite way of thinking about things. But we don't understand. Simple uh, example is like, when they come back home from school, we expect, what all do we expect? First to keep things in their own places. Yes. Change their clothes, wash their hands. Some mothers, to the extent they expect that they should wash their socks. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not too much. It is, according to too much, there are mothers who come and say, what is wrong? We used to wash our socks. Why can't they do it now? Some parents expect that the children should wake up in the morning at 6 o'clock and do exercise. And they themselves are obese. We are all obese, if we see. Okay, and they come with the complaint that my child doesn't wake up in the morning and do it. What time does a child go to school? Seven. At what time does a child come back from school? Seven. So when is the time for the child to do exercise? Then I ask, do you do any exercise, sir? Yeah, I do. So, do you do it every day, sir? <coughs> occasionally. So when you do occasionally exercise, how do you expect your child to do it every day? My child can get diabetes. Do you have diabetes? Yes. But you don't do any exercise. Yeah, I don't do. I have a lot of stress. Definitely you should do exercise. So, there is a particular way in counseling to get a realization to the parents. Then you realize the problem is not with the child. The problem is with the parent. So this is a counsellor's perspective on children. What is parenting? Lot of things I think I will let you to read and lot of things I will talk. Okay? So it is very very clear. Whatever is not clear then we will discuss those things. Lot of things are very very self-explanatory. There are some uh, things I have tried to, <laughs> I don't know how it is going to be picturized here, to take some animated, uh, what is it called? Comic. Uh, clips. Okay. Mm. Parenting is an umbrella. Uh, we are, we need to address variety of issues faced by parents in upbringing children. Parents are really clueless as to deal with the problems. Whether the children are normal or not. Whether whatever they are doing today. If the parents compare today's children with themselves. How we were so many years back. We were so obedient. We used to listen to our parents. Now today they are not listening. Do you think it is fair? No. Not at all. Not at all. Did we have the kind of exposure today's kids are having? No. So who is responsible for the exposure uh, the kids are having today? As we, are media. we are responsible. We shouldn't give them that exposure. If we take simple, you know, I have a comparative study of kids being brought up in very simple environment. Okay? Kids who don't have exposure to internet, kids who don't have much exposure to television, kids who don't who are going to bed early in the evening, say around 8.30. No pressure on their parents. Absolutely no pressure. They are going to schools, coming back. They are really performing very well. But kids who are in the so-called city, okay, they have exposure to malls, they have exposure to every uh, gadget yes. possible. Facebook, in fact they fake their age, you know, they, when they go on to Facebook, if a child is about 10 years old, 10 year olds are also on Facebook, 
five, six years old are also they are trying to be on Facebook. There was a parent who came and said that my child is gifted. I said, how did you come to that conclusion? No ma'am, at three years he wanted to be on Facebook. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> so how come? Because your elder brother is on Facebook and he knew Facebook. So he wants to be on Facebook. That is gifted. I want you to assess him for giftedness. How old is he now? He is six. And one uh, elderly person came and asked this child who is six years old. Usually when some guest <coughs> comes home, uh, he came and asked if he uh, which school are you going to come here, come here, which school are you going to? This child looked up. He didn't have anything. He I'm very busy. I'm going to do something This is gifted. For that parent, this response was out of the world. Internally, I felt like slapping the parent. I was like, what is this kind of a question? How can you praise a child for such a behavior? And they had, they had, I said, let us wait for some more time. Let us see how the child grows. We will do the giftedness uh, test later on and I send them off. But is this giftedness? So that remains to be seen. Interviewing parents is a technique how to get information. I want you to note down certain things because I will be getting you to do uh, your own way of getting information from parents. This is my format. You can have your own <coughs> format based on this. <coughs> so what all do you need as a school counsellor? What all do you need? What all information do you need from parents? Do we need birth details? Yes. Why? Uh, to assess the you know, uh, terror situation and you know, how does it the normal, uh, the um, match of chronological age versus you know, mm. mental age and mm. if it was uh, I mean, if there why was does the birth, birth detail? Not, why does the birth detail? Yeah, because because the birth child is it or not? Any of them is one by one, one by one. One person answer, then we get a lot of answers. So whether the birth cry was there or not? Birth weight, birth, weight, birth weight, what was the process of birth, whether it was a delayed delivery, whether it, the child was born through normal delivery or cesarean, these presentation, force and force of all these things you are aware of. even if the parent is very aged person, like a child aged or early, early, 16 year old mothers, I have seen uh, mothers giving birth to kids at 16 years of age, okay, that also in fact. Do you think it is healthy? Uh, 16 year old mother, the child will be probably underdeveloped because the uterus is not so very well developed at that time. So, even, these things impact. Uh, even the, any disease is contracted immediately after the... Yeah, because the resistance is not much in the child. So then, uh, milestones are very important. These or are the any uh, genetic abnormalities which... Yeah, consanguous marriages, yeah. genetic abnormalities, there is a uh, tendency mm -hmm. to pass it on. Then you need to ha ask milestones from the parents. For you to ask these questions to the parent, don't you think so? So each one of you need to have uh, in-depth knowledge on milestones. At what age the child walked, at what age the child talked, at what age <coughs> the social play came. So we are going to see briefly all these things. Parenting styles, is it important? Yes, we are going to see that also. Schooling. How many, when did the child start schooling? How many schools the child has changed? Whether the child liked going to school or not? Whether the child, whether it was the child's preference to go to that school or it was the parent's preference to go to that school? These all things matter. Then, play. What type of play? Does it matter? Play? Yes, it matters, why? Right? It matters whether the child is able to play in a group or plays alone. Plays alone. Plays alone. What is it indicative of? Social, social, social skills. skills. Social skills. Social skills. Social skills. Uh, at the same time, uh, most of the time, like a few students, uh, like, kids, they play a, a lot with the uh, crime kind of like uh, mm. these kind of. Like, that that, that indicates the personality of the child. 
and also they play with electronic uh, goods and they like to play with switches and all those things. A lot of things, a lot of information you will get. So it is very important to have in-depth history. Just talking to the parents, not noting anything down is not going to be enough. Gathering information is a very important task for counsellors. Needs of the children. Never anybody bothers what the child needs. Parents don't bother, teachers don't bother, school doesn't bother, counsellors also don't bother. The child is brought to counselling. Does the child need counselling? No. They don't know. Parents don't know. Counsellors also take it up. Why do they take it up? Shall I? Huh? Yes? I do I do we have to take it. Some are like that, not all. We cannot generalize that way. Some are like that. There may be genuine uh, cases where it is required. So what happens? The parents say, sometimes we have to take it also, so that we have contact with the parents all the time. Because we cannot directly sometimes tell the parents. Sometimes the parents are very understanding. When we say, it's not the child, it's you who needs counseling. Sometimes you cannot do that. So what we have to do? We have to remain in contact with the parents, so we have to keep the child with us. We have to do that many a times, right? Chandani? We have to do that many a times. So what we do? The child comes. What is the need of the child we assess? Is the child saying, there was a child who came and he said that he, went, he was going to a counsellor earlier. And he's a very bright child. What he said, he told the counsellor, I don't think it's working out between you and me. <laughs> Life style. It's not working out between you and me. And I think you need to refer me to a better person now. Then she said, okay, you go to Delhi. I'm sorry, but that's what she said. She was a personality development trainer. Then he came. He came to me. See, I was going to this personality development person and I told her, see, it's not working out between you and me. She said, you go to Delhi. Do you think you are JNT, right? Do you think it's going to work out between you and me? I was like, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, let's see. It was, I don't know whether it will work out. Let's see what's the problem. And he had tremendous problems. Tremendous problems. Till date, we are still wondering whether it's going to work out between him and me. But he's still coming back. It's a big, uh, big time problem at home. So he's trying to solve it. But one thing, uh, he gave me one compliment uh, last week. My mother knows me 3%, you know me 5%, he told me. <laughs> and the rest 95%, his three diaries know him. So I told him, if any time you trust me better than this, you get the three diaries to me. <laughs> so the need of the child, that means at least I have understood the need of the child is that he needs somebody to listen, not advise. No need to give advice. Parents also, we will go as we well, will see. They, the children sometimes don't need any advice. They just need you to listen. So these are the important uh, things in birth and milestones. So we discussed these things. One is kind of birth. Prenatal period is important. Is maternal mental health important? Yes. yes. So you all know. Prenatal factors contribute to child's later development. Anybody has questions on this? Satish? What ma'am? I didn't get that question. Prenatal, yeah, prenatal, prenatal factors, factors contribute to child. Yeah. It does. Many, yeah. Any questions?
equipment are there? How many principles are there? I see three there. How many are there? Come on. Psychology students. How many principles? Child development, developmental psychology also is mentioned. How many principles of development are there? We people are not, are not that much bookish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you time to think. How many? Come on. I mentioned only social, social. No, no, no. Those are aspects. Principles. There are there are some certain principles of child development. Mentioned, I will also tell you uh, maybe where it is mentioned. It's mentioned in Elizabeth Harlow.
there are some things that children are not ready to learn. Are there things that can be done at the age of 10 that cannot be done at 5? These are the things I want. I will give you only 5 minutes. You can discuss in your group. One person can write. Okay? These are the things. Three things I want. One is, are there things which can be done at the age of 10 that cannot be done at the age of 5? Are there ways of thinking, behaving, feeling that are different because of it? It's a very simple thing. It takes only 5 minutes to do. After doing these two things, you make a comparative list.
they have more like playmates and then they have teammates. Hmm. At five, they are not yet uh, not fully capable of understanding yes. the rules of the team. Hmm. And they may still be a team, but still they are playing by themselves and they their own rules. Wonderful. And there we are. Too. There we are. So you all got it, right? So I will just go through this very fast. Okay, I'll just scroll it. Okay, so this is physical development. This is how it is. This information is there. But ma'am, one thing I've noticed is with the recent generations, hmm. milestones need to be revisited. Yes. Yes. Faster than yeah. Some are, not all. There are even now there are children with delayed milestones. Yeah, it, the more more because uh, the thing is this because of hyperactivity there is a speech delay. And also nuclear family. See the concept yeah. of speech delay in autism is no longer true. There is speech delay in hyperactive kids also. Yes. Hmm. Yes. 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 I'm not talking about only the you know, uh, no. problem side of it, but the uh, progress side of no, it. No. Like for example, take conservation. Why do you think? No, we you know, have seen, I have seen you know, children at a much younger age understanding conservation. How, do they understand conservation? No, no, actually I'm forcing my child. If every time if I uh, explain continuously the same thing is going at home. So they try to follow me, but they are not clear about it. No, conservation, can you explain? How do you think that they understand conservation? For example... What is conservation? No, conservation, for example, if I ask them, you know, in different uh, images, like or take two glasses of water and they, you know, try changing it, or let's like, say take uh, the examples of chocolates, hmm. how many we can exchange. Hmm. They're understanding that, okay, this much is also equivalent to one big chocolate. They are, you mean, you mean to say? They are capable of hmm. doing it. I mean, I'm not saying there is a lot of different yeah, but because of the exposure and because... But still they may throw a tantrum because... Uh, <laughs> they are not getting the, you know, yeah. supposedly larger <laughs> quantity. No, I'm not saying it is already done, but needs to be revisited. <coughs> oh, what do you think it is? Do they, do they, uh, or do children today, I mean, toddlers, you have toddlers at home, you, if you can, if you give them unequal portions of something, will they accept or will they fight? No. Yes, I was thinking about Sara. Sara does it. She accepts it. But Afra does it. So that's what? Yes, I was thinking about it. I'm not saying this huge gap difference. Uh -huh. But like it's decreasing. The decreasing. cognitive capabilities are kind of maturing much faster than it was. Like, that that is there. That is there. Their, their reasoning ability, you can reason out with them. And probably you can tell them that okay, next time you can have it, but they will remember that next time. They can see a fake very easily now, that's the thing. Yes. You cannot yes. them. Okay. So what happens when we go to schools and all, uh, they say that you know children don't want to sit in one place, especially preschools. Children don't want to sit in one place, they are, they are jumping up and down, it's very difficult for us to make them to sit and teach them anything. But that's the need of the body. It is like breathing, jumping up and down, that's the need, there's a growth spot in them. They cannot sit, play is required, whatever you need to teach them at that point of time has to be through play, has to be through jumping, has to be through music, through dance, you cannot not make them sit and expect that they will sit like, you know even 10 year olds and 15 year olds nowadays it's difficult to make them to sit and uh, make them to uh, teach or learn something. So that's the need of the body. They, they are not that well physically coordinated, you know, they will sit and then they will listen and you teach them ABCD on the board. That's not going to happen. So this is what, this is about one to six years. Here more the uh, gross motor coordination is happening. So you can have uh, bigger games with them more rules oriented games with them. So this is what she was talking about. This is very important. Cognitive development. At each stage of mental development, children have specific thinking tools. Well,
talking about adults. You give two women, one woman you give a shovel to dig a hole, and one woman you give a spoon. Which would dig faster? So you are talking about two children with same intelligence, but you are not giving them the same tools. <coughs> so how do you think? You have to give them the same exposure because they are not coming from the same background. Okay? <coughs> what happens is, teachers or school or parents even they say that we give everything to the child. We give proper food. We are teaching 20 children, 30 children. Everybody is learning. This child is not learning. But the thing is, you are not giving them the same tools to learn. Hmm? <coughs> so what is intelligence? Intelligence is the sum of thinking tools available to an individual at a particular time in development. Children use the strategies available to them. It is our responsibility to make the resources available to them. They have the intelligence, they have the tools, but we have to make it available to them. The opportunities, the exposure, instead of blaming them, putting their self-esteem down, we are going to see how that happens. So, if we change the uh, thing, if we change the shovel and the spoon, will the other woman be able to dig faster? Yes. It is going to happen. So, the strategy will differ, right? So, that is what we have to do. We have to give them equal resources, equal everything, then every child will be able to perform in the same way. Instead of doing that, what do we do? Blame. That is it. <clears throat> what causes a child to move from one mental development stage to another? So, this is, this is the uh, GPRJ stage. Where, matur where these are the four very important aspects according to Jean Priyaje maturation, physical experience, social experience and equilibration. <clears throat> what is maturation? What according to you is maturation? Maturity? Mental what maturity. is maturity? maturity? What is it? You understand the things, that you understand the concepts. What do we say like when somebody, we say that oh, this person has become so big but he is not mature, he is immature. Is that maturity? Yes. Uh, maturity, when we say maturity we mean uh, deriving from what we have experienced and applying it in our future lives for better or for worse, like doing absolutely, something or not doing something. Absolutely. Whatever we have, whatever knowledge we have or whatever skill we have, or whatever are the components which are available with us, we are using those components in our day to day living. Well, I think that is intelligence. Hmm? That is intelligence. Well, that is what you is uh, the natural capacity for that age being uh, you know, uh, exposed or being exhibited. See, there are two so, types of maturation. One is when, when you are uh, supposing when the when the child is one year old and the child starts walking okay till that time the child was only crawling that means the phys physical maturation has happened okay the, the leg muscles have strengthened and the physical maturation has happened similarly the brain maturation happens okay when the brain maturation happens that time the child will automatically start thinking in that particular way that child I agree, cannot, but hmm. the way we use the term mature in common sense, like okay, he is mature or not, huh. we are actually referring to intelligence. Yes. But we should in, not. In we should proper s psychological term, maturity is exactly. only about whether they have you know, proper okay. capability to yeah. 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 That is what I am saying. That is what we shouldn't do. Yeah. That is what we shouldn't do. Each child is different. Each child. We, are, we have to see whether we have given him the. See, if you are not giving the cow the fodder to the proper fodder, it will not give milk. It is as basic as that. So, if you are not giving the child the fodder, the child's brain the fodder to mature, it is not going to behave in a mature way. That maturation I am talking about. <clears throat> so, that maturation has to happen according to GTI. So, simply put, 
there is a child who will say, the child has not slept in the afternoon, will say that afternoon did not come. I'll not, there is a child who, a child of say two years, two and a half years, is used to, or for example, you are taking this child to city center mall. Okay, you are taking this child from Jubilee Hills to city center mall. He is used to going on a particular route to city center mall every day. One particular day, you don't take it, take the child through that route, he will not agree, he will cry till you reach the city center mall. He will not believe you. So, what is the thing? It is not that you, you will explain to the child, no, 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 I am taking you to city center mall, we are going to city center mall. But the route which you are going is not correct, according to him. He will not believe you. Why? Why he will not? It is not a question of belief here. It is the question of that conservation which she is talking about. That does not happen. So, as teachers, as parents, as counsellors, we have to understand that maturation fact. <clears throat> that comprehension part has not taken place in the child's brain. Got it? Any questions? This is a little complicated. We have to understand and accept that each child, whether it is two years, between two, two and a half, three also, this takes time. It depends on the child's birth, it depends on the child's genes, it depends on the child's, uh, the kind of nutrition we give to the child, the exposure we give to the child, all these things, okay. The second thing is physical experience given to the child. Whether the child is exposed to these things, whether the child is taken to two, three different routes to city center mall. That is the physics, physical experience, social experience. How many situations the child is exposed to. And equilibration is the balancing between all these things. Whether there is a balance in the child's mind. Okay? The woman who had learned to change her strategy when she was given a shovel, there was a time that she continued to use the old strategy. A person who was used to use a spoon to dig, when she was given a shovel, it took her some time, you know, to use the long stroke. She was still digging in the small. Because, so the child will also do the same. It took her some time. That is equilibration. That assimilation has to take place. The old information and the new information, for example, <coughs> very simple information I will give you. Phone. You are using a Blackberry phone. And then you buy a touch screen phone. Does it take time yes. to do that, to take a call, to swipe it? Isn't it? That's all. That assimilation, it takes time for the child also. Okay. It's kind of modeling, right? Hmm? Kind of modeling. No. It's it is about transfer. transfer. It is for assimilation. See, that this is a different class. I am taking GPIJ. I will take again another class. See, <laughs> it, there, there are four steps around in this accommodation, assimilation, there are four steps and then there is reproduction. You, you read Jean Piaget, call me, I will explain. Stages of cognitive development, as an infant, the child is in motor stage, will only understand activities related to physical, doing. Whatever the child does is the only thing the child will learn. Got it? Child will not learn anything which you say. Will learn only thing which the child does. Concrete. Which the child sees and does. I'm simplifying it like anything. Late childhood, semi-abstract, like afternoon, hurrying up. <coughs> For example, in early childhood, if you, if you tell the child, don't go out in the rain, you will get wet, and we will have to take you to the doctor, will not understand. If you are going to tell the child, you go out into the rain, later we may have to take you to the doctor, the child, what is the connection <laughs> of rain and doctor? Why is this mom gone crazy or what? 
to go and play in the rain, that's all. Doctor and all, I don't know. They will not understand those things. They have to play in the rain. Then later when they have to take, then you take to the doctor actually, then you will say, see I told you, you I have to take you to the doctor. When you told, huh? They will not connect all that. That they me. How about saying it? You will you will get wet and you will feel cold. Yeah, that's what you have to bring it closer. And yeah, closer. Like very close. Or they, you they have to experience. And even then, last time you uh, you you know felt sick. No. At that point of time. No, no. Okay, but. The best thing that to work out is don't go out in rain. You will sit and watch the car car. Yeah, that's the that worst thing. That will work. <laughs> no, that will work, I'm saying. That will work. But, but all else you will enjoy the day and play for a while and come back. But what is wrong? What is wrong? Let them get wet in the rain. No, I'm just yeah, saying. If, you, if you don't want them to get wet in the rain. They should. They, they should. should. But you are not getting it, man. I'm talking in abstract terms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get I am still here. I am in more <laughs> Okay, but in, uh, in semi-abstract, they do. Yes. They do. Okay, they understand. And uh, adolescent, I don't have to tell you, all of us are still, most of us are still there. <laughs> okay. And most of us fluctuate between the stages. Stages, right? yes. And then we just go concrete and we don't want to uh, get in anything else. Yes. Yeah. So that's it. We have to remember, this is just a reminder. I can't go in depth into this. This is just to brush up your memory as school counsellors to tell the parents it's okay for the child to do these things. It's normal. It's not a problem because when we go later into the problems, you will realize what are problems actually. Not doing homework is not a problem. <clears throat> it is not a problem. What is a problem? You have to see it out. Mm, I'd like to share something. Mm. When, when we have to analyze abnormal thinking, for, for example, in the psychiatric ward, which has happened in the US, they have a checklist of how they will uh, mm. you know, take in patients. If you, uh, so they say, uh, like one journalist went there, asked, you know, what is your criteria to know if the person is abnormal or not? How do you know it? So they said, we have a very simple experiment. Uh, we take him to the you know, uh, bathroom, fill the Bath tub with full of water, and we will put a spoon and a bucket and a mug. And we ask them to remove the water. Did you post it on Facebook? Whoever has list? seen it will not respond. Yes, yes. I already see Anisha smiling and me. <laughs> so I would like you to think about the answer. Is who favorite. is the person who is normal or abnormal? This is my favorite icebreaker when I go into any class and I explain what psychology is and start <laughs> Place a spoon, bucket, and a mug. Let's discuss with the team. <laughs> you breaking now? No. No. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, social emotional development by Erickson. These are the never ever forget Jane Piaget, Erickson. Ever if you forget, go back to it. Kohlberg. Even don't forget Freud. Kohlberg. <laughs> Kohlberg. Yeah. Those. Self-actualization, don't forget, keep reading because you always have to get back to these theories will never go away. Uh, Erickson's trust versus mistrust, uh, autonomy versus shame and We will get back to autonomy very soon now. Uh, initiative versus guilt, work versus inferiority, identity versus identity confusion. Does Erickson stop here? No. no. How many? Eight. 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 Why did I stop here? This is good. Language development. This is language. This is how the child goes. and she's like, two years my child is supposed to be saying 50 words 
Okay, I'll go back home and count how many words the child's problem yeah. is. And then I have to actually explain that it's a yeah, arbitrary it thing, you know. It will be plus minus, always. Okay, so five to six years, most grammatical structures should be there. Six years onwards. If it is not there, then, then you have to check for?
Equal all your group numbers. Equal all your group numbers. I don't want to say Rahul Singh simply. I don't want to say Fatima Singh simply. I don't want to say Manas Singh simply. Thank you. 